What is up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. Hope y'all doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be talking about the sentencing of an anti-government, anti-law law enforcement terrorist named Lloyd Barris, who you're seeing on the screen, for his murder of a police officer that was conducted by him himself and his son, uh, Marshall Barris, back in 2017. So we're going to go into the details of how they killed this uh, Broadwater County deputy in Montana and uh, what happened during his uh, during his case, during the trial, and how he tried to get out of it but was not successful. He did manage to da uh, dodge the uh, death penalty, which is what I would recommend it for him, of course. <laughs> you guys know me. And I'm going to read you guys a quote from Mason Deputy Mason Moore's wife, where uh, she was asking for the court to never let, let this guy out of, uh, out of prison. And uh, the deputy's brother was uh, of my mind where he said that the fact that he escaped the death pen penalty was an unwarranted mercy, quote unquote. That is what Nebraska Moore said regarding this piece of crap America hater who killed this cop. OK, and uh, lastly, we're going to be talking about the importance of centralized government and the dangers of libertarianism and anarchism and people who want to destroy the government. I want to be going into why it's important to have centralized government and why these people who are into anarchy and libertarianism are childish idiots. I know because I used to be one of them. I used to listen, listen to Arch Enemy and, uh, you know, and other bands who are very anti-authority and think that, oh, it was so cool to be anti-government, bro. But this is how it ends up. OK, and we're going to talk about countries that have no government and what happens when there is no centralized uh, authority. Uh, we're going to talk about the chaos that ensues and the dangerous lives that the people in those countries have to lead. There are modern examples, Somalia being one of them. So we're going to talk about that. So let's get to, get into the details of this lunatic over here. OK, <clears throat> extremist sentenced to life in prison after he and his son lured deputy into high speed chase to kill him. So, like I said, his name is Lloyd Barris. His son was Marshall Barris, who was shot in another uh, shootout with the cops and killed. So he was never able to stand trial. But nevertheless, Lloyd, unfortunately, did live um, to see trial. So let me let me first give you guys the details of what happened here. Then we'll talk about why he didn't get the death penalty. So they lured this cop mason moore into a high-speed chase and um after the high-speed chase they lured him to a position where he was vulnerable then the son uh shot through the window of the deputy and shot him in the face and killed him back on may 16th of 2017 that's what this whole thing says okay and then they came back around and shot him again uh because he was still breathing so this guy these these two guys both of them deserve the death penalty now um Marshall was the one, the son was the one who actually shot, uh, shot the deputy, but nevertheless, Lloyd Barris agreed 100%. He was part of the criminal enterprise. He was the one who was driving the car. And uh, though he didn't pull the trigger, he is still guilty. Okay. So the main prosecutor from the Justice Department for Montana was Daniel Gazinski here. And the judge in question was District Judge Kathy Seeley, who sentenced this guy to three consecutive life sentences. And this is what she said. I don't know that there was a plan per se, but these two men with their extreme anti-government beliefs were both out of control. So the, the plan was very simple. They were on what's called suicide missions, and they were just basically trying to see how long they can go with killing government officials and, and not dying themselves. That's what they were doing. They're just going around shooting people. And by the way, this is not the first time that they got into shootouts with law enforcement. Uh, Lloyd Barris and his son and a woman reportedly got into a shootout and standoff with law enforcement in Nevada and California in March of 2020. So after they killed um, this uh, this deputy in 2017, they got into another shootout here. They reportedly fired at a California Highway Patrol helicopter. Though no one was injured, the pilot had to land. So these are lunatics, this one, entire family. And regarding why this guy didn't get the death penalty that he so deserved, prosecutors ultimately stopped seeking the death penalty uh, because of Barris's mental health history. So I, I don't know why the prosecutors bought this. He seems like he's a lucid guy who's able to express himself. He, he's just a crazy person without being genetically um, damaged. He doesn't have mental issues like genetic issues that cause mental problems. He's just a lunatic who believes in crazy things. And by the way, how much do you want to bet that this guy wasn't listening to Alex Jones, okay, or some other anti-government conspiracy theorist scumbag, like all these lunatics on 4chan and 8chan, which by the way, need to be shut down uh, because of their terrorist activities. So 
So guaranteed he was listening to him and his son were probably blasting conspiracy theory uh, radio or, uh, you know, YouTube videos or whatever the fuck. And that's how these people get, um, uh, you know, turned into extremists. And then they go out in the real world and kill cops. OK, so this is the material result of your conspiracy theories. All the people out there who defended Alex Jones uh, when he was banned, he deserved to be banned. He deserved to be jailed for what he did. OK, if I ran the DOJ, Alex Jones will be in jail right now for criminal defamation. Unfortunately, we don't have something like that. If you want to prevent stuff like this from happening, you need to shut down these conspiracy theories with the law. If you don't do that, then murders like this are going to keep happening because these ridiculous ideas are going to keep uh, being put out there. Just people who just lie straight up about the government, pretending like the government is so bad. In America, you have the most freedoms any human being has ever had if you live in America. Okay, With all the problems that we have, we're still one of the best countries in the world, Okay, barring Scandinavia. But it's still not enough for them. Still, America is so horrible. Still, the American government is, is the, the most evil thing, uh, even domestically. I, I admit that the DOD and other, other parts of the military have done bad things in other countries, of course, the CIA, etc. But domestically, this is one of the best countries that you can ever live in. And that's why so many people want to move here. OK, the right wing is right about that specific part, although, you know, I'm not a blind, uh, patriotic, uh, you know, idiot who just uh, picks out the good things about America. I cover the good things and the bad things because that's what reality is about. Being honest. OK, but America is not the worst place to live. And people like this do not deserve to live in America. OK, and I'll talk about where they should go in a second. So let's finish this thing off. So uh, Mason Moore uh, is survived by three children as well as his wife. And this is what his wife had to say. I want to read that as the last thing here. Uh, Moore's wife, Jody, called the killing an execution. That's exactly what it was. Please do not allow this man the opportunity or possibility to ever do this again to another family. She said in court, he has proven by his past behavior that he will do this again and again. And that's true. That's why he should have been executed. Not these prosecutors were way too bleeding hard buying into his mental defenses. Instead, of they should just shot him, which is what he deserves. Uh, C. Lee, the judge, took the same position, saying in her ruling that she did not believe that the public would be safe if Lloyd Barris were free. Uh, the defense had argued he should go to a uh, state hospital for treatment. No, he should be put in a hole. That's where he belongs. All right, let's talk about the stupidity of anarchism and other mentally defective movements that want to destroy centralized government. So if you want, if these people who don't like the government, why don't you get your asses to Somalia or Sierra Leone or other countries in the Middle East? What was that country where we had, they had complete governmental collapse? Bahrain, yes. Go to Bahrain if you wanna see what happens when there's no centralized authority, okay? You should be on your knees, bowing down and thanking your lucky stars that you live in America, you pieces of crap, okay? <laughs> These people don't appreciate how good they have it because they don't have an appreciation for what, what the world and life is like when there is no centralized authority. The reason I personally stopped being a libertarian is because of studying Japanese history. So back before the uh, the Japanese emperors um, centralized their authority, the Japan was run by uh, warlords called daimyos. Okay, different different parts of Japan were ruled by different daimyos. Okay, now eventually the daimyos were uh, you know had to swear their loyalty to the emperor the the emperors of japan they solidified their power but for different periods of japan there were daimyos who ruled uh the local areas where the peasants basically had to give them whatever they asked for so whatever farming you do you have to give most of your uh your uh, farming yield to the uh to the daimyo in the area the lord okay this is what life was like there was no rules the 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 uh the thugs that uh, worked for the daimyos would come in, like rape your wife and and uh, even abduct your daughters or maybe even kill your son. Things like this is just utter bedlam and insanity ensues when there is no centralized authority. Okay, I'm not saying that government itself, our government, other governments don't have problems. Of course they do. If they're run by human beings, there's going to be some level of corruption or, you know, overreaction, underreaction, whatever it is, there's going to be problems. Nothing is ever perfect. Perfection is a delusion. In nature, things just are the way they are. And the best we can do is try to have the best kind of life we have by doing being the most honest people we can and doing the best to serve other people in a fair way and to not lie about them and to do right by the people around us. That's the best we can do. I just don't think I'm doing well, Ma. Are you doing your best? Yes. And that's all you can do. And America, from all the countries I've seen, I've studied the history of many different countries and been to many different countries uh, in Europe and outside of Europe. 
And America is the best place that I can say. Other places are good, too. I'm not saying America is the only pl good place. Other places are good, too. There are many countries in Europe that I would like to live in, Sweden being the best one, uh, one of the best ones in Europe. Uh, but America is a great place to live. And no, we, even with all the stuff that happened during the Iraq war, all the spying, all the stuff, the quality of life in America is still awesome. Ten out of ten. OK, and people like Jimmy Dore and Max Blumenthal and even the TYT people, they're all overreacting to what's happening in America. America is not as bad as Jimmy Dore says it is. The police is not as bad as TYT says it is. That's just a fact. You can look at the statistics and see that most police interactions do not end in violence. OK, 90. You can look at the stats in every different state, but in every state, it's either 95 percent to 99 percent of the time you have peaceful interactions with the police. What the fuck is up with your hatred for the police? Just the fact that they exist. OK, now, I don't know what this, these specific people's hatred towards the police were, but I can guess, you know, maybe you had a couple of run ins with the police that you didn't like. And therefore, what you decided that every single police officer desi deserves to die. Barris took the stand and he said that he's sorry for Moore's family's loss, but says he doesn't know if Moore deserved it or not. So he still can't tell. He killed a complete stranger, a police officer that he had no personal dealings with. That police officer didn't do anything to him, his son or anybody else. They randomly picked out an officer and killed him, okay, a deputy in this case. And he can't even bring himself to say whether uh, Moore deserve to die or not okay this is during his testimony this guy so deserved the death penalty it's not even funny but i, I don't know what the prosecutor saw and uh, whatever for whatever reason they thought that it was too extreme to give him the death penalty prosecutors really need to grow some spine around here i appreciate all their work but they really need to be tougher and not buy into these criminals and their scumbag excuses and execute all of them once again i want to read the words of uh nebraska moore who was the brother of the officer that was killed. He said that it was unwarranted mercy that he didn't get the death penalty. And he said, quote, the next time I make popcorn, I will regret that I'm not eating it at his execution. The next time I have a beer, I will take great satisfaction in knowing that while there is alcohol in prison, it's usually fermented in a trash bag in someone's toilet. <laughs> Centralized government is essential if you want to have peace and order in society. That's why law and order is important. And there are people on the left and the right who want anarchy on the streets of America. Those people need to be crushed into the ground because I do not want anarchy and most Americans do not want anarchy. We want law and order in society. And anybody who disturbs that needs to be crushed with extreme prejudice. OK, it's not fun, fun and games. It's not your, you know, a fancy revolution. It's violence and bedlam on the streets where innocent people get dead like this. That's what anarchy means. This is anarchy. This is lawlessness. This is libertarianism realized in the real world, because this is what they do when they get their hands on weapons. OK, again, you don't have to live here. OK, if America's so bad, get the fuck out. Go live in Sierra Leone where you can experience real anarchy, where you have roving bands of, uh, you know, criminals on on the backs of pickup trucks driving around and forcing innocent people to do what they want and raping women. That's anarchy for you. Have fun. Go to Sierra Leone. Fuck out of America. And that's all I got to say for this video. OK, this is serious stuff. That's why I'm getting mad. So that's what I got to say. Thank you so much for watching. As always, like the video, share with other people who need to hear this message. It's very important uh, to criticize America in all the right ways. There's a way, right way to criticize the government, and there's a wrong way to criticize the government. See you guys in my next video. As always, peace. 2099 in Mega City One. 800 million people, every one a potential criminal. Roving armed judges keep the peace. Pulse in the name of the law. Toughest of them all is Judge Dredd. He's back, fitters. After a desperate mercy dash across the cursed earth, Judge Dredd has returned to Mega City One. They said it was a suicide mission, but he looks pretty alive to me. This is some parade. In the cavalcade, Dredd is joined by the much revered Chief Judge Goodman. Alongside him, the unsmiling gaze of Deputy Chief Judge Caligula. Yo, Judge Dredd, can you give me a Please. How'd you like five years, creep? Sorry. Things have changed since you left, Dredd. Nothing changed in this city, Chief Judge. It just stinks more. Hmm, you should know, Dredd. You've spent half your life in the gutter. Watch your mouth, Cal. You spent half your life in diapers. Since his return just five hours ago, Judge Dredd has already arrested eight perpetrators. Come on, you old bag. Give me your purse. Rapid, meathead. Oh. That's nine perpetrators. 
It sure is good to have him back. 